Thank you. Uh, Tom Sheffy now has a question for Attorney Dean. It is no secret that Connecticut is experiencing serious budget problems. If the next governor demanded an across-the-board 10% cut in budgets from every agency, would you agree to cut the staff of the Attorney General's office? Or would you argue that the Attorney General's office is different, has a more important role, and should have an exemption? Uh, I have already pledged to cut more than 10% in the Attorney General's office in terms of the cost of that office. I do believe, based on the state auditor's report, uh, for those of you who don't know about the state auditors, it's a Democrat and a Republican that goes out and audits the state agencies and offices um, that showed gross mismanagement and waste across the board at every level in every area of the AG's office, that before we ever cut personnel at the office, there is so much that we can cut that we will get down to that, to that percentage without cutting staff. Um, but at some point, it may be necessary for the state to cut staff, and absolutely, I will do what is necessary in a prudent and responsible way to put this state on firm uh, economic footing. We need leaders, and leaders do what is difficult. They do what is sometimes unpopular. They do what sometimes will not get them reelected. That is what real leadership is about, and if it's necessary, and we find that we're in a more serious crisis in the future where that kind of cut is necessary. We will find a way to do more with less. That is the experience I've had in my career and in my lifetime. Uh, many people know that I started earning the money from my own horse at the age of six, bought it at age 11. <laughs> many people know that I started my own law firm at age 35. I was raised in a family with the values of Americans, how to use resources wisely and prudently and to make, them, make their use effective. That's what I bring as a business owner and a lawyer to the Attorney General's office, which my opponent, frankly, doesn't have that experience. Attorney Jefferson, 60 seconds to respond. Let's not be penny wise and found pound foolish. The simple, hard truth of the matter is that the Attorney General's office produces far more in revenues to the state uh, than is expended. Uh, if you count just the revenues to the state, it's four or five to one. If you throw in all the money that the Attorney General's office brings back to businesses who are cheated or to consumers, the ratio goes up to seven or eight or nine to one. Uh, so let's not be penny wise and pound foolish. Are you going to cut, for example, lawyers at the Department of Revenue Services? Who's going to go uh, chase down the tax cheats if you make that kind of a cut? Uh, a few other facts. Twenty years ago, the Attorney General's office was handling a caseload of 38,000 cases a year. Now it's up to 54,000 cases a year. Most of that is in child support uh, and, and child advocacy. So if you cut lawyers, you're going to be taking it away from the most vulnerable people in our society. And yet today, the Attorney General's office has 311 employees, just two more than 20 years ago. It's a very efficient office. Yes, I'd like to respond briefly by saying that in our form of government, in a constitutional democracy that we've established, that the separation of powers means that only the legislature is the revenue-raising body in our form of government, and never should the Attorney General's office be in the business of raising revenue fines, penalties, recovering losses, recovering tax revenue owed to the state. Absolutely. That is not revenue-raising. We need to be very precise about our words, precise about our Constitution, and get our government back on the right track.